Okay, well, I've got 10.30. Everybody got 10.30? Thank you. I'd like to start on time. My name is Deborah Mandel, and I'm the moderator for this morning's panel. And we have two fabulous presentations, each 45 minutes. First presentation is 2012 Revision, Redesign, Reevolution. Planning initiatives to meet the research and teaching demands of the digital generations. For this presentation, we have two speakers. Carlton Jackson is the manager of the Nonprint Media Services Library at the University of Maryland. As of the fall semester, this library is still a full services academic media resources facility with physical and virtual media collections and both a digital humanities center and a BA program in film studies embedded within its walls. At heart, Carlton is a faculty librarian specializing in audiovisual media collection development, reference, access, preservation, and curricular planning. Carlton is active in the American Library Association and a founding member of the ALA Video Roundtable. Association for College and Research Libraries, and CCUMC. He has been on the boards of CCUMC, the National Media Market, and Alexander Street Press. Second speaker is Desi Elvikor, who is the Director of Collection Management and Special Collections at the University of Maryland Libraries. His responsibilities include the allocation and management of the library's materials $9 million plus budget, planning and administration of 50 library faculty and staff positions, and coordinating the collection management responsibilities of more than 30 subject specialist faculty librarians throughout the libraries. During the nearly 30 years that he has been affiliated with the University of Maryland, Desi has served as a reference librarian, history and social sciences bibliographer, and been a member of the senior, senior administrative staff. He has an elective office on the Library Administration and Management Association of the American Library Association and has authored professional publications and delivered presentations to professional and civic groups. This presentation will be a half an hour and that will leave uh, 15 minutes for questions and answers at the end. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I have to do a quick housekeeping uh, or a piece of information here. There's so much uh, research that we're doing for these two projects that are co-mingling with each other that we want to tell you that the 15 minutes or so of questions at the end is going to be a very important part of our presentation. So I hope you'll take notes and uh, be able to come back with some questions because there seems like a million documents <laughs> And the, uh, most of these documents, or a lot of these documents, we'll, we'll be able to share with you and, uh, directly and also put up uh, to the various sites for uh, CCUMC. But I have a, an alternate screen here with Dropbox open and lots of different documents. And as those questions come up, I will occasionally stop and maybe have Desert or say something for a second while I bring that document up. But I hope to be able to share a lot of those things at the end. So keep note on that. So that's the big housekeeping that I will be flipping back and forth a lot while we talk, and I apologize for that. But first, to sort of set the stage, uh, I'm going to have Desiree sort of introduce it, but I just want to say one last thing about the title. As for those of you who know me, I'm a big fan of puns. So you see the revision, revision, redesign, and the big emphasis is we're hoping for not only re-evolution, but a revolution in what we're doing with uh, our facilities. So, to you now, Desiree. Good. Good morning, everyone. Um, I think basically I'm a warm-up act for Carlton. Um, but we have been working very, very closely together, particularly on the, uh, the revisioning and, and redesign of nonprint media and more generally uh, media collections and services at the University of Maryland. College Park. So I hope that, uh, as Carlton says, I do set the stage for uh, what then he will kind of uh, flesh out in, uh, in greater detail. Uh, I think we all want 
need perhaps to change from time to time. Sometimes it's minor tweaking of things that we do or how we're organized, how we're structured. But for others, sometimes it's more than tweaking that need to be done. And perhaps it may be more massive transformation of how it is that we do our work, how we are structured, how we're organized, and how otherwise we're positioned to do what we are there to do on behalf of the university. Most of us know all too well how easy it is sometimes to give up, because change is, is, is not easy, particularly uh, change that goes more deeply into the organization. And sometimes we may conclude that, geez, this is not worth it, or it is, it is way too hard. But change we must, and we do need to embrace it. We are about substantive change at the University of Maryland. My colleague, Carlton Jackson, will be describing for you two major initiatives that reflect this commitment to change in fairly significant ways, namely how we envision using space in our main library facility, which is McKeldin Library on the College Park campus, and how we've arrived at that particular vision, but also how we are also re revisioning media collections and services at the University of Maryland. I'd like to provide some brief background to help all of us better understand the broader context in which this work is unfolding today. Please keep in mind as you listen to what Carlton and I are describing that this is still very much a work in progress. Consider this, what we're doing this morning for the next half hour or so, an early progress report that I hope will at least provide some initial and important insights and practical suggestions regarding the value of careful and systematic planning and the need to develop and articulate a clear and well-defined process. The University of Maryland Library's latest strategic plan, which bears the title Outward and Upward, dates from 2010, just two years ago. It underscores the rapid and unrelenting change in the way students and faculty find and use information, and the need to create inspiring environments where our varied constituencies, wherever they might be located, can accomplish as successfully and as easily as possible the work that they are about. The university, including the libraries, is keenly interested in increasing impact and facilitating this through our physical and increasingly dynamic virtual space, our collection content, and the service that we provide our users. Subsequent annual updates to the strategic plan have identified discrete action items as well as additional initiatives that now more strategically focus our annual work plans and our annual priorities. Included among these action items is the redefinition and reshaping of our nonprint media services department to cement its long-term relevance and to leverage potential and existing partnerships within the university and beyond. Already during the first year of the strategic plan, a video streaming service was introduced through our nonprint media services library. And in collaboration with our information technology division, it provides registered students access to films and video 24 seven, films that are needed for the completion of our students' coursework. 
this initiative superseded the aged dial access system that I'm sure many of you are familiar with in your own organizations and institutions. The dial access system at College Park was, of course, the mainstay and primary vehicle for many years within nonprint to deliver video content required for curricular and instructional purposes. Students were required physically to come to nonprint to view the required film assignments. Not surprisingly, the streaming video service that we initiated as a pilot using the campus online media, media reserve system is and has been already incredibly popular and it is on track with how students now expect the delivery of their required course content. In the spring of 2010, when the service began, it was limited as a pilot with three instructors and three classes or courses, encompassing only 12 video files. The following semester, the fall of 2010, the pilot was expanded to 14 instructors and classes representing 68 video files. The pilot ended in with the conclusion of the fall 2010 semester. We then opened the service up to all interested instructors. In the spring semester this year, 2012, 127 instructors in 191 classes representing 720 video files were served and provided. So far during the current fall semester of this year, we are on track to have a record number of users. So the few numbers that I, I provided here clearly indicates the, the escalating popularity as well as the importance of the use that the streaming video service clearly provides. Throughout this process, we have been working closely with our campus legal counsel to navigate the appropriate copyright restrictions. The tremendous success of our streaming video service has served as an impetus to the larger revisioning efforts for media services at the University of Maryland. The other critical factor was the retirement in the summer and fall of last year, 2011, of four veteran members of the staff of our nonprint media services department. They represented four FTE from a total of seven FTE. So their retirement during that short period of time represented a tremendous loss, a brain drain, if you will, of unprecedented proportions. And collectively, the departure of those four individuals represented over a hundred years of cumulative experience and expertise. In the interim, we have had to cobble together temporary and contractual staff to keep our services and facilities operational. In terms of revisioning work, this has presented us with a rare opportunity to begin redefining the new expertise that will be needed, among other things, and crafting brand new positions that will best serve the needs of the developing future. Currently, audiovisual materials are con concentrated in the non-print media services library and also available in subject concentrations in other libraries that we serve on campus, including our performing arts library on the other side of campus, 
but also within our main special collections units, which reside in the same library building as non-print does. Materials are generally available on campus in hard copies, but are moving to wider access in digital and online systems. Nonprint is leading the way with our ongoing streaming video initiative that I described a moment ago. The overall scope of our revisioning project is nothing less than to investigate, analyze, create, and ultimately implement courses of action to move our non-print facility and the libraries more broadly forward in media and media services for the 21st century learner. So let me now turn things over to Carlton for a more detailed look at the process that has been developed for both the McKeldin Library space planning and for the non-print revisioning strategic initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, Jessiter. Um, okay, so, uh, so for the details, as I said in our housekeeping part, there are lots of backup documents, descriptions of all the things that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about it quickly here, but uh, keep uh, track of them for the questions. Uh, you may notice that uh, when we, also the part of the title that I put 2012 as the title. This is an ongoing process, and hopefully, maybe this time next year, you can get the results. The other reason I put 2012 as the part of the title is to get it alphabetically in front of everyone else's presentations, and also to remind people of the movie 2012, which uh, talked about the Mayan end of the world. And if you saw that movie, I think it started, people said, hi, how are you doing? And then an earthquake happened, and then everybody ran for their lives for the rest of that movie. Uh, to some degree, I feel like this project was, uh, these two projects are pretty much like that. And uh, I'll speed you through. I was nice enough that I think in your proceedings you only have 30 or 16 slides. This one's 62, but I'm going to go through it like that movie for you. And I will not read everything that's floating on it. But, all right, so two projects happened, and the reason I'm talking to you about this today is because I happen to be involved in both of them. Uh, the uh, space planning one started first, and then was followed up and informed, uh, and the non-print project, the media project, was informed by this first one. I like some of the quotes, the project philosophy of the projects in general, but specifically the space planning one. Unstable times <laughs> mean that we can no longer rely on the old ways to do things. Uh, both projects, now the, the first one, the space planning one, is using what's known as three sort of concepts, but the main one being the uh, the one that we started with, the participatory design concept. Everybody in it gets to participate in describing essentially what they think they would want to have uh, if they could do anything they wanted, which is a very dangerous concept, uh, but was very informative to a lot of things. Uh, the, uh, okay, so hey, hey, read that, and I'll keep talking. Uh, so the first one was based on uh, research that has come out of the University of Rochester with Nancy Foster. I hear a lot of you have uh, heard about that, and Nancy Foster was indeed our outside consultant for this particular project. They have brought in ethnographic research uh, to bring into the particip participatory design process. Um, you will eventually see that they brought in the School of Architecture, they brought in the Department of Anthropology, and everybody participated in either giving input or analyzing what everyone else was doing. I specifically was part of the, the uh, situation where the early stages, the uh, ethnographic analysis of all the spaces in the building uh, came. So, Desert has already mentioned uh, the history of the place. Whoops, went too far. A little definition of ethnography for those who might not know it, it's a participatory design. The first stream, so there was multiple streams of information uh, being done for this, and actually we have a librarian here as well who also participated a little bit in this process. Library-led activities, we brought everybody in, students just pulled them out of their chairs, brought them into rooms, uh, they got a chance to volunteer, they sometimes didn't get a chance to volunteer, we paid them, 
we did everything with under uh, in, uh, uh, human studies related uh, uh, institutional board ways of an uh, analyzing what they were doing. But faculty, students, a variety of folks. It was very time consuming and it was really, really informative. So one note I have <laughs> uh, in the documents that I can share with you later, one of the experiments which was people to draw exactly the space they wanted, exactly the way they wanted to do it. And that was a really intriguing thing. Uh, we analyzed all the information that came from the surveys, from the reviews, from the drawings, uh, fed them through our sort of in-house way of compiling all the data to see what types of pictures they would do. And it was very, very informative. And I have a, a separate PowerPoint that can list those and we will work with it. But some of the big things that came up is that we were surprised with what sort of things they came up with that the very important materials, for example, for them in a building was not necessarily the materials that were in the building. <laughs> Obviously there's online ways to get to things, but sometimes people drew their space and they drew stacks of books and stacks of materials and they put a desk to it and we asked the question, so you want to be right next to those stacks? And I said, yeah, I'd like to be near the materials. And which materials would you like there? Oh, I don't care. I just want stuff. I want stuff in my area and I want to have it in between me and that other desk where people are studying and doing things. But they wanted windows. They wanted air coming through. They wanted to see the sun. They wanted to have groups. They wanted to have uh, uh, the ability to get up, go somewhere, come back and have that place still there. They want to know it's there when they come in the morning. They want to be able to reserve it. They want to do all sorts of materials on that. We stopped people walking down the hall and did on-the-spot interviews. We walked to the student union and did on-the-spot interviews and said, why are you there? Why are you not at the library? We called people up in their dorms. We went to the rec center. We did various studies over and over again to see why are you there? Why are you doing? Why are you on the mall? We did a whole day thing just in the area outside of the library and then maybe 20 feet farther and then down at the other side of the mall. Why are you doing this? Why are you using this device? It was very, very good. And I actually have the raw data that we can share with some folks here. Uh, the structured observations, and then like uh, uh, anthropologists, we found places where we could not be seen and we watched. We watched <laughs> what everybody was doing. We counted what they were doing. We counted what they touched. Uh, if they were using a library computer, if they brought their own, if their mobile device. One little thing that we, thought was really interesting that sometimes they were using all three. <laughs> they had the computer, they had their uh, cell phone, and they had their laptop, and they were going back and forth through it. We crept up on them, and we said, what are you actually doing? Facebook, is it Facebook for fun? Is it Facebook because your site is there? Is it YouTube for this? And compiled the data. The data is very large. We did a presentation at a preliminary point to our library school, our iSchool, to get a sense of what they would interpret that from their point of view of what they were learning to be librarians and information specialists, and then got that particular data from their, that area. Uh, it's very detailed, and I have a slide if we decide to go to that for some other questions. Boy, I've got to talk fast here. Then the anthropology department got a hold of all the data, and from, for one semester, <laughs> For a lot of the uh, uh, undergraduate classes and a couple of the graduate classes, they studied the data, came up with their own experiments, and did the same thing. They watched, they analyzed from a, an anthropological point of view of the things were going, and then made a report back into the system. Very intriguing. The architecture department got their data <laughs> and started to look at spaces from an architectural point of view and how people behave in spaces, and did a lot of the same things, and then did the research and the backup, and have created bibliographies of information. Uh, we have been given permission, we, from the Dean of the Libraries downward, to share this data outward with folks for this study. Now this study is not totally complete, but what happened from that particular point is that, uh, well, it's not yet project two, Information was gleaned that was readily available to understand and some takes a lot more understanding. Uh, a lot of that information has been sent out to various other places, to other universities,
for them to be able to uh, do their studies and compare with us, and then somewhere along the line, that will come back together for it. Now at that point, though, we had a big sense of how students, faculty, staff, even users uh, from the general community walking in and out thought about what they were seeing. And of course, as you might understand, they, they look at what they're seeing and they have ideas, but they don't know what they don't know, so they don't always bring that into the, uh, the place to, uh, to understand materials. But we started to have a good feeling for what people wanted and could compare with what we had. What did we have the old school? We have a building with stacks, a building with materials sort of clustered together. And as more and more materials came in, less study space. Um, it was part of the project. The goal was that the team members could start working on any part of that if they thought they had a gleaning and start making those changes now because trying to wait to do a super project all at once is a very expensive proposition. So our person for the commons started reconfiguring the way computers were done and the kind of spaces. We observe people in these sort of these configured areas, reconfigured areas, and we go, wow, that person is sitting there all day and has never touched any print material <laughs> or video or something, but has only worked with the computer, or has only read the stuff that they brought with them. So more spaces, more places that they do, and, and, and also then maybe the materials could actually go and be paged. I mean, we've actually uh, done some changes even since we looked at this report where other things are starting to be brought into that space for that use. Uh, but very intriguing. Again, I have so many documents that if I, as soon as I get to this part, then we can zero in uh, your questions on some specific things. The other part of it, though, was, which came to my, that put a smile on my face, is that a lot of people drew or mentioned or talked about things that looked like media. They didn't say, I want an audiovisual center here, but they said, this space I want, I also want to have this monitor here, and I want to be able to talk, and I want to be able to show things, but I want to be able to bring the film, and we want to talk and collaborate, and what did we hear this morning? I want to bring the film in, and we want to look at it, and we want to talk, or I want to stream it some way, and all of these things started to inform, and we kept saying to ourselves, us media folks, that's what we've been wanting to do, or are doing, which was interesting, because a lot of people giving us data never mentioned anything that was already available in the media center <laughs> because they were fam more familiar with one place so they hadn't gotten there. So we knew that marketing and long lines of things that we needed to do to form them what we did have, but since we were doing this process in the reverse, they were marketing to us what they wanted. And so we tried to clean it up for them. So that sort of began along with the fact of losing half a department, the media center, all at one time. The, the date 11-11-11 was very important because that was the day, that <laughs> the effective date, essentially of all four people's retirement. And what was it, a day later was the party. Now maybe next year when we're here, and I've now learned how to do all the editing stuff and all that, I can actually show scenes of the party. But that party <laughs> also became a sort of another participatory design element of this whole thing because we invited the dean, we invited the faculty, we invited all sorts of folks in. Does that count the questions? All right, I gotta move fast. <laughs> uh, to see and understand what was going on. And various people sent, uh, did speeches and things talking about what they would like to see in the future for media. So that started the process. It was an opportunity. You've heard the, the description of what was happening with the, uh, with the building. Our building where the media center is is a newer building than what the other space center, us, uh, other place for the space planning. But it has gone through a few renovations and things as well. Being for you non-library folks here, since our place opened in 1973 as an all magnetic media center, <laughs> so we weren't the original CCMC type of folks who were all 16 millimeter, but we moved straight into that. And a lot of that is still around and still accessible and a variety of things. That just gives you the descriptions there. And uh, Desiree talked about the issues <laughs> and the times that are changing there. So we took the space questions and things from project one, but started doing our own participatory one where we started bringing in stakeholders. People who have used our facility, people who haven't used our facility. But Desiree was nice enough to say, let's look at the entire campus. Not only the entire campus, maybe universities in general. 
and we brought in stakeholders from outside the general library bank, filmmakers, uh, university relations, uh, television, people who are connected to broadcasting and broadcasting archives. We created a team that was part of, as he said, the special, uh, special collections, performing arts, architecture, and we focused on the youngest and the more experienced of all those team members to get new and newer and emerging ideas from that. So the expertise, the biggest thing is that we went outside, did some, cons uh, uh, and to arrange a consultant, including one very important person who was very uh, familiar, which was Howard Besser. Some of you may be familiar with him. And he spent a residential week at our campus and interviewed 72 different stakeholders <laughs> uh, to find out what they wanted. People who run our, our digital humanities center, people who are our landscape architecture people. Why? They're interested in visual culture, but we also discovered that the head of that is running a film program on environment as character, and he wants a way to be able to show materials all around and people to come up and be able to get metadata from a statue or metadata from that and be able to bring it back visually. So all these other visual skills started to come in that people thought our center should be the provider or the assister or the teacher of that. And not the filmmakers, the budding filmmakers. People come in, we do workshops for people how to do a film and have their rights cleared ahead of time and be able to go with the market. We have an advisory group of local filmmakers who, who are trying to help us uh, work with that particular part. We just reached out and reached out. With our consultant, we came up with a variety of project deliverables that we hoped he would help us with and then our internal people as well, to, to look at the entire range from chairs to video to synergies. And we have the lucky thing here that we're working on that in our building is the, the College of Library and Information Services, we call it the iSchool. In the building is a broadcasting archive, it's a Library of American Broadcasting, all with separate sort of administrative ways uh, separate from us. Uh, but coming in, and, and it's one response to this, uh, post, uh, this project, was to bring in a, uh, a digital, a video conversion unit, an internal unit for the libraries to use for preservation and all of that. And the concept of maybe a public <laughs> one with these same things to be able to work with the public when they're doing their own materials and production centers, but to try to get them to some degree represented in that building as a space because the more online things you do, the more it looks like you're not seeing, <laughs> you're not seeing people working, yet we're never off online contact with folks. Oh, just though, I got a last one in uh, information from a person handing our reserves. You talked about last semester, 700 and some files. We're in the fifth week of the semester. We're about to approach 700 and some files for for reserves, and this is not counting the things we do through Alexander Street Press or our own digital library where people just link you know, to those things. So we're still really working. Stakeholders, we have a list of stakeholders if people want to know who to talk to. Uh oh, it's getting to its question times. Interest, folks from all over campus came in to uh, talk to us and we talked to them, including our legal folks. Uh, we have a list of sort of points of light all the various things that kept being mentioned over and over again by people outside of our administration that they were interested in seeing come to that place. So just to give you, and of course you have these on your own proceedings, we were looking for common ground, looking for ways that the uh, performing arts library and we could work. The, the concept of maybe a general media, the University of Maryland, is the first stage for everybody and where they happen to be located physically, virtually, or whatever, is just secondary to the whole search. Uh, the things can be discovered wherever they, they lie, while so many things are happening, changes of catalogs, changes of web pages that are happening elsewhere, but then inform on us. It's a really, very tricky thing. But the most important thing to me, and then I'll wrap up for questions, is that the concept of our physical space. Now there's so many virtual spaces, but I don't think any virtual space is perfect yet. I mean, to a lot of people, it just looks like a place to go and click, <laughs> and then something happens and you look at it. But if all this stuff is happening elsewhere as far as content delivery, then what do you do where the place was that everybody 
was before. And that is really the most important part that we're working on now. You talked about flipped classrooms, so we're talking about flipped media centers, flipped libraries, flipped everything, where it becomes so important, we hope, and what we do, that a person will want to come, they'll stand in line to come in just so they can be near people who are working with stuff, talk to them, collaborate. So as a final thing, a couple of the uh, things that have happened already, I said a conversion, uh, a digital media center made it to us. A television station was created by uh, uh, University Relations. You all, most of you may have that, but we got one into the libraries. That happened a while ago, but now they've opened it up for the general public to use. <laughs> uh, our uh, Digital Humanities Center has moved its physical location from McKeldin Library, because everyone's looking for space there, but doubled in size and opened up in light, because they were one of the people who were responding to our surveys too, and are now physically in our place. And a newly formed, uh, again, BA in world cinema and cinema history, it has a two-year MOU to actually reside in our library and have their offices and their advising and to do classes within the library. And then they're very near to a collection of 50,000 materials that are, can be used on demand, circulating collection, all the things that you guys do. But we're trying to synergize them all in one space that makes that space so hot for them that they just want to stay there. At least that's our hope. <laughs> so it was impossible to get this all here. If you bring us back next year, we'll give you more details. <laughs> And I have a million documents that I can switch over to in response to questions, so now it's time for questions. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was too fast. Hmm? I will repeat the question. If anybody has me, yes. Okay, now of course this is still in process. Uh, we're doing a lot of things that may have, we may have heard. We're letting our students tell us what they want to know. We're you know, jumping into all the social networking things that folks are doing. We're trying to let those students, oh, so here's one big point. When all our staff left, I've had to populate essentially almost the entire department with student assistants. Uh, super students, folks who are just very interested in media and film, we have to get them in there and have them uh, have them essentially do all the public interface with uh, the three remaining staff members behind the scenes giving guidance and giving help there. And it, and, it, and it actually seems to be working. Now they all have different backgrounds and skills with working pe with people. Uh, we bring in field studies people from our iSchool, get them in and hope that they mark it out to back to their clientele, to the other people in the iSchool. But yes, the rest of the marketing is going to, I think, still is still part of the project report that we're hoping that Howard will be able to deal with. This was, we had a teleconference with uh, him on Wednesday <laughs> while we were here, and we've been working on the scope of deliverables and the types of things that we are hoping to all address <laughs> in this particular report. <laughs> we talked about the other 72 points of light. Well, this one is just sort of the how do, how do we categorize those things and how do we talk about it and how can we look at it across all the buildings of the libraries and the other parts of the libraries. So all the stakeholders we brought in, we did sort of actually, uh, we worked with them to give them back the information that they were sharing with us, to share with them the information other people did so that they could inform the other people. So we had the Center of Teaching Excellence come in and interview us and then take all the information back and put it in their publications. We had university relations come in, they've done a few little videos, they're gonna put it out, so it's sort of cross-pollination that way. Uh, there's way more, but <laughs> did that sort of answer your question or, or the beginning? Is, is that um, available to download? Yeah, there may be a couple things that might show you that aren't a final prod a product, and uh, if I accidentally show you something that's still in discussion, uh, I'll apologize, but we'll get something that you could do. 
Uh, you have in that, uh, well, I'll give you our emails again, you can ask directly. But a lot of this information has been produced in a, fa in a fashion that we can actually share. I just wanted to show you, since I'm running out of time, one interesting little thing, if I can remember the name of the document. Uh, but if one more question, maybe, while I'm looking for it, and maybe even Desiree can answer something. Well, since I guess I have to answer that yeah, one, Desiree. That one's yours. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> the students were very cooperative. We interviewed a whole class of, of um, students who are trained to be part of the writing center. So we had very specific groups. We would target them, a group of graduate students who, uh, who are in TAs but uh, help people uh, with uh, technology issues, people who worked with faculty on trying to uh, uh, you know, work with the various things that they would do, but w students just coming down the hall. Now we did show you. We we bribed them. We'd give them a five dollar printing card so they could, you know, have five dollars worth of printing and stuff. But they knew it was ahead of time. It it was uh, it was worked with, but it was just a really great. Uh, they were they were very cooperative. The faculty were harder. <laughs> uh, some were very very interested and some not so, but. Uh, we rounded it up. We rounded up the library council. We rounded up the people in the Senate. We rounded up actual departments, <laughs> and, and they participated. And of course, the faculty who were in uh, architecture and anthropology were fantastic in this as well. Did you say this was available or not? It will be. Oh. OK. Uh, our, our consultant is going through this now, so the next stage, and we hope eventually to share that report outward of what they actually what, do. Uh, what Carlton ha has on the screen are actually working documents that mm -hmm. the, uh, the planning committee has been using, and certainly most of the, most of the things that you see up there, uh, Carlton either, either gleaned from uh, files of, of things that we have already had or, or things that he has massaged uh, more recently for, uh, to serve the purposes of the uh, uh, planning committee. And we've already done the presentations on what we uh, discovered in the various places that we were working with. So we do have these as documents that can be shared. As a matter of fact, this, one, this particular one I'm showing was done at ALA uh, for the ACRL subsection of ALA this summer. And uh, it may be actually on that site, but we're willing to share. I actually have all the scans of all the drawings that were done that I could, uh, we could show you the possibilities of the future of various places. I can't do this fast enough when we have to get to our next one, but uh, we're just very, very willing. I would love to be able to show you more, but we just probably needed a workshop. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. All right, well, thank you. Sorry, wherever you are, there you are. I'll get you over there. Did you need anything over here? Okay. Perfect. Is this on? And I'll give you this one back. Thank you, that was so inspiring. Uh,